everybody. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sisters podcast, where we give you our point of view. We are so excited to be here today. Um, Trek geeks, you guys are going to be proud of us because we got a super cool guest joining us today. Um, but before we get to introducing our guest, I want to let you know we have all five sisters in the house. Say what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Woo so um starting to my left we'll have yvette blackman tom hello <laughs> going down i have fran taylor how you doing over to the right i got jd keeling 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 okay. <laughs> and up top miss sabrina wood whoop, whoop. And I'm Tamia Harper, and we are the Sci-Fi Sisters, and we are here today with our super wonder, wonderful, fantabulous, amazing guest, Miss Malisa Longo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Malisa <laughs> is an actress. You're so welcome. Thank you for being here. Yes. She's a fabulous actress whom you all might know because of her husband. If you're a DS9 fans, you knew Aaron Eisenberg. Uh, but we wanted to have Melissa on here today to talk about Melissa Longo herself. The That's right. Actress, the artist. She's a fabulous artist. Uh, she studied acting at the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. Um, and uh, she's gone on to have many roles. And now she's going to be in an upcoming production called Glass Stars, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be playing like the title role, right? I mean, the lead role? Uh, one of them, yeah. There's a couple of uh, lead roles, but Lily Rhodes is uh, uh, one of the main characters so i'm really excited because she's a smart badass woman so sounds like a woman that we know right <laughs> <laughs> you know and you have a fabulous business called walking art by melissa which is super cool and um and a lot of us uh, and and not to be outdone by everything you are also co-host of the seventh rule podcast which was started by aaron and mm -hmm. and you continue on in his legacy and you co-host that with uh Ciroc lofton and Ryan and you guys, the three of you guys do an amazing job at the seventh rule. And we love our seventh rule family. And um, the seventh rule family has been so Yay. wonderful to the sci-fi sisters. Well, yes. yeah, it, we love the sci-fi sisters and, <laughs> um, it, and it's such a great community. And, and Aaron would be so happy to see how much the seventh rule has grown as a community. So, yeah, he would he would love that. I so. think it's amazing. It like because the I think he set the tone. Like I came to the seventh mm -hmm. role pretty late in the game. I came. I like I didn't discover the seventh role until after Aaron had passed, mm -hmm. um, and um, and so I went back to the beginning and started listening to the shows from the beginning. And I was amazed because I was not one of these people who ever got to meet him or you at a convention before. So I was really coming in blind, you know, and I was just amazed by the warmth and energy and love that you could hear coming over, you know, through him, out to him. It's for the fandom, for the craft, for, you know, uh, for it's amazing. So and I think that's really worked its way into the fabric of what the seventh rule has become. It's really a place of a lot of love. Hashtag chat pack. Our paw is strong. Chat pack forever, baby. <laughs> hey, all the chat packers. We love you guys. What's up, chat pack fam? So, yeah, I mean, and I think that you you are a great addition to that because uh, every time I everything I get from you is love and warmth and, and you were never mm -hmm. like standoffish to the people in the seventh rule, which made me feel really welcome. Yes. Aww. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to get that fangirling out of the way before we got into it because <laughs> it really meant a lot to me when I came in. So, all right, mm -hmm. y'all, we're going to get into the nitty gritty now. We're going to start talking some Trek with Melissa Longo and Sci-Fi Sisters. So I'm going to open up with a question, like the general question. Like we know that Aaron played Nog on DS9 and that was a, such a, a wonderful, wonderful role that all of us really relate to. A lot of us relate to. Um, 
but where did your love of Trek start? Did it start before, were you a Trek fan before you met Aaron? Um, I was, I had watched a, a few TNG before Aaron um, with my sister, she she was a TNG fan. But then um, Deep Space Nine premiered on my birthday in 1993. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> and and uh, I was a, a first run watcher. So I, I've been a fan since the beginning um, of DS9. So it's, it is, it, it holds a special place in my heart and I had no clue back then how big of a role it would play in my life now. Right. So that that's a, a fun little gift too. So isn't it cool? Trek is like the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. is. My, gonna, um, go ahead, Fran. Uh, just to say she said her birthday, my granddaughter, one of my granddaughters, uh, was born. Um, um, during an episode of DS9, we were all at the hospital and it was in the morning time and I said, I told everybody, I said, she's going to be born when Star Trek comes on. DS9 is going is to be on when she was born, you know, when, when she's going to be born. They laughed at me and everything. It came on at 7 o'clock. She was born at 7.16. <laughs> I said, see, I told you. <laughs> Don't mess with Fran. <laughs> Fran knows her trap. <laughs> she's coming in the world at, and doing Star Trek. I love it. Yes. I love it. And she did. <laughs> DS9. Yeah. Nice. On a Saturday. <laughs> I love that. I know, right? I love that too. Like, I wish I'd been born during an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was I born during? No, I was fully formed when Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> this no. is true. There was nothing of that happening for me. <laughs> but but anyway, so what, what I want to know, my, my question, so we're kind of going to just shoot questions at you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Pretend this is like your thesis and you're defending it. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued to know, you know, I... I like to Mia, um, this is Sabrina, everybody. And like to Mia, I came into the seventh rule um, when you were on with Ciroc. And, you know, Aaron had already passed. And I had been going to watch it, going to listen, going to listen. And then finally I was like, oh, my God, I got to go back here. And everyone was giving their um, you know, condolences. And that's when I came in. So, but now, reading all this stuff and listening to you, I'm always intrigued by you because um, I was like, She's got all this stuff going on. So I really want to know, my question is, tell me about the artwork because I love the t-shirts and I just cannot get over the t-shirts. So I know I'm not wearing one right now, so don't judge, but um, tell me <laughs> about that. And, you know, what is your art? You know, what was your art history? Because I'm an art history major and I love oh, wow. the sketches you do. Well, thank you. I mean, I've been drawing um, since I was little. Um, so a lot of it is self-taught. Um, it, it's just, it, and, and it would be because my imagination is pretty active. <laughs> and so that was a good outlet for me to get whatever was in my head out is to draw it or try to draw it as much as I possibly could. So, um, that is, and then, and then the t-shirts come from just inspiration from everyday life of, you know, what I see and, and, or hear, or, or, you know, so there's no rhyme or reason. <laughs> wow. I'm really impressed because that, you know, just to capture someone's, um, like essence of a character that we all know so well and you get it down to like a few strokes and we know exactly you know who that is it's like it's just so cool and and i i just said like well she's got to be like you know art district like where'd she go to school was she practicing well, <laughs> self-taught okay yeah i mean and then that was when i was supposed to be doing school work too, you know, <laughs> I would be doodling and making pictures um, on my schoolwork. So, um, 
Yeah, but you and uh, Sarak, you doodlers, you both doodlers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you started training like you started um, your career really long, right? Right? You started dancing, taking dancing and stuff first. You wanted yeah. to do um, musical theater, right? I did. I went to school for musical theater. Went to college for musical theater, um, but I started dancing ballet and tap when I was six years old. And my first ballet recital, I was a y- little yellow flower. And I, I still remember being watered and having to grow on stage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is where it started. And then um, ever since then, I, I was always in choir. And and um, I went to a British school. And they do things a little bit different there. Um for elementary school, so it was heavy into music and and such. So we would put on plays and and um, you know music stuff, and so and then it carried on through middle school and then high school, and then uh, I started at Metro State and studied theater there, um, mostly Shakespeare and dance, and then I moved to New York and went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and then. For their summer program and then the american musical and dramatic academy um that's where i graduated from so that's really cool you've got all that shakespeare training that's perfect training for a star trek fandom exactly yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. have shakespeare will trek have you ever <laughs> taken any of uh air, um classes that um with carmen yeah, yeah. with carmen have you taken yeah. one of his classes I've taken two of his online classes. Really? And they're great. Yeah. God, in the last chat pack round, um, round table, like I said something about it. And he said, well, I'd like to see you in one of my classes. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to show up to like do these Shakespeare classes with him. I'm scared. <laughs> well, it's not nearly as intimidating as you think it would be. He has a way of breaking it down where it's, it's understandable and relatable to real life. I got so much out of it, um, not just for Shakespeare acting, but acting in general and how to approach roles in in general. And it was so it's so informative. He's a great teacher. So yeah, it sounds like it. I'm I'm joking. I, I do. That's one of the things on my list. I want to take one of those classes. So yeah. if you hear if you hear me like you know doing any Shakespeare in one of these podcasts, it's because I was in the class. So <laughs> <laughs> so I have another question to back up that one. I know Fran's got one too. But so loving musical theater. Tell me, like, what is the one? If the, if there's a musical that comes on TV, which one is it that you're going to watch, no matter where it is in the broadcast? You got. I sit down and watch it. <laughs> well, I have a tradition of watching The Sound of Music every Christmas. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> that, is <the> my, one. <laughs> that is my Christmas tradition. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but my favorite uh, to see on Broadway was probably Chicago. Mm. And I'm so sad that I, I missed Nana. Oh, in it yes. as Roxy. That would have been it. But yeah, but I was I was going to school at the time and couldn't afford a ticket because you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, right. so you had me at sound of music. You really did. <laughs> <laughs> Am I, I the only one here who musical. hates musicals? Probably. No. Oh, okay. I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, no, you're not the only one. I don't hate. Okay, I'm sorry. Musicals, I don't hate but, them. Because no, I don't hate them. I just rather I not know. rather not see them. <laughs> the hills, the hills aren't alive for, for you guys. Like, I mean, the hills are not alive at all. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> it depends on the musical for me. Yeah, you know, like, it depends on the musical. I love Dream Girls. Oh, that's I, so good. Well, yeah, I, I love Dream Girls. It does depend on the musical. Yeah, it depends yeah. on the musical. Like I, yeah. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not going to be getting on a riverboat and singing, you know, <laughs> stuff like, I, like that's not my musical. That's not the musical for me. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really. It, and I learned while I was in school for musical theater that I don't love all musicals either. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it depends on the musical. Yeah, OK. So, um, 
Yeah, no. I'm like I'm, I'm gonna I'm say like, no to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't even get, I couldn't even get through Hamilton. So I guess I guess move along no. home is not a favorite of oh. anybody in this <laughs> right now. <laughs> JD, right there. what's your opinion on musicals? See? She's the one that made us watch Cinderella. Did she make us watch Cinderella? <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> Rogers and Hammerstein, that's all over the place. If you had to come up with some way to get this into Star Trek, and now you're going to sit there and look like you don't like any musical? No, no, she didn't say she no. said they're okay. No, she said they're fine. They're fine. She said she... I I I like the original Rogers and Hammersteins, the one that had the the one with Leslie Ann Warren and Stuart mm-hmm. Damon. Yeah, I love that one. I wasn't too crazy about the Whitney Houston Brandy <sighs> one though. But I, I like really wasn't. I like no, it wasn't. <laughs> but I love the original, the one that was in the sixties with the suit uh, uh, background and you know and all. I just thought it was just wonderful. Okay, <laughs> I know JD likes. JD likes. She said they were all right. <laughs> That's I, get it. That was one of my favorite shows that we ever did, JD. I love right, I was trying to tell Fred. You know, we did a podcast on that, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, but honey, I mean, but honey, honey, cut cut her off. She was like, "Hey, Fred." <laughs> oh, okay, but so, I mean, I. I wasn't. I mean, I'm being honest. I, no, no, I, I think the I think the sixties ones was the one with, you know, like I said, with Stuart Damon and Leslie and Warren. I thought it was fabulous. Mm-hmm. I did. That's the one that we grew up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then and then yeah. JD came. JD was the our age when the Whitney Houston one mm-hmm. came out. So you know, it oh, is okay. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how you. So, come, yeah, that's how you come I guess it's a generational thing. It's it a is. Generational. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, wa- I was, I was watch, I was watching it over and over and over again. Cause my kid was about JD's age, I think, or a little old, a little younger, a little younger. Well, Melissa's okay. deciding that I, she's I, not I, into, not into all musical theater. <laughs> so now you're going straight to features. So we really <laughs> have to look forward to you, the, your features. features? <laughs> you're doing dramatic. You're doing sci-fi. I see some horror. I see. Uh, uh uh, yeah, I would do it all. I would, yeah, <laughs> all of it. I'm, a, I'm not a uh, one genre wonder. <laughs> I, <guess. laughs> I hear that. <laughs> I would Wait, do I'm musical. Not- I would do horror. I would do drama, comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, sci-fi. So now, when is the, when is this new one coming out? When is it gonna? Well, we haven't started filming yet, and we're, um, it, it's still pre-production. So, mm-hmm. um. Uh, and it, and I was one, I think I'm still the first one cast in the production. So okay, cool. Okay. cool. And the can't, title can't again? For that. Glass Stars. Ooh, so That's a great it's, title. Yeah, it's a sci-fi. Um, it, it's a pilot, I believe, if I got that right, uh, for a longer, you know, mm-hmm. series. Limited series. Okay. Yeah. Um. But the script is great, and it was written by Catherine R. King, and I think some of you know her. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. She's big in the, the Star Trek community, and yeah. it's a, a really well-done script, um, female-driven, um, both in the script and in production as well. And cool. um, it's got some LGBTQ undertones, too, which is really great as well so oh i can't wait that's awesome that's awesome I, you know what i'm i'm, I'm interested to know like because i do want to come back to trek a little bit um who which uh which female character do you identify with the most or who's your favorite female character in trek it has always been Major Kira. <laughs> Yay! Oh, I mean, Kira. Yeah, yes, yes. Kira's my girl. I mean, yeah, yeah. So Kira. that's a bad ass woman right there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Who, who is who is tied up, pregnant on a on a slate, cursing somebody out? <laughs> still, still talking trash. Still talking trash. Right? Talking really shit. talking trash. <laughs> 
I'm going to kill you. But she strapped up, pregnant, on the slate. But she yeah. didn't kill him, and she did. <laughs> yeah, and only Kira could get away with that. Right, right, right. Because yeah. we all knew it was going to happen. Yeah, because <laughs> so, yeah, she can back it up. Is that Ooh, right? <laughs> yeah. That's my girl right there. Man, love me some Kara. Yeah, I know you had uh, a question. Um, I had a few questions, but um, mainly I wanted to ask about how 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 are you doing? Basically, I wanted to know um, how are you getting through this? Is this is this real is this helping you is are we are we do are we saying the right things to you i'm on mute no go ahead oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> but i wanted to know how you were how are you getting through the days because i know um COVID probably didn't didn't help um yeah i mean the past two years have been uh rough mm -hmm. <laughs> to say the least um life has is been very trying and and it's like let's see how much more we can give her and see how much you know more she can take but um i'm i'm doing okay and uh and i'm getting through it uh, the, the seventh rule has helped me immensely um with their support and and everyone involved has been so amazing. Um, um, my family has been great. So um, and and the DS Nine family has been incredible. They, you know, people say don't meet your heroes because you'll be <laughs> disappointed. Yeah, and and I'm so happy to say that I'm not disappointed with any of the cast members of Deep Space Nine. They have all been so loving and welcoming and and supportive and gracious. So much so that, you know, they, they've helped me get out to Vegas this year. So, um, awesome. as well as other people. So, mm -hmm. um, specifically Chase Masterson, who headed up trying to get me to Vegas as well. So, and, okay. and I can't say enough about them and how much their support means it, it's incredible so i'm very uh, happy but, to hear that because i yeah. we i know we are pretty much we're big ds9 fans and i think we we always hope that they would be those people mm -hmm. you know because we i think we all think they are those people and be, now we know they are so that that really mm -hmm. does a lot and i'm glad you're you have people around you just know that we're always going to be here for you uh, um, thank you you know we always think about you so yeah. um, just always know that we we will be here if you need anybody to talk to anything i just wanted to put that out there because um there's tons of people going through the same thing you're going through right now and to hear that you're doing well or trying to do well and trying to get through it um just might help somebody else that's all mm -hmm. well thank you and i appreciate that so much i mean it's it, it's a struggle i'm not gonna <laughs> sugarcoat it it's <laughs> tough yeah. um but it's it's been like my life has been at one extreme or the other extremely horrible things have been happening and then but also wonderful wonderful blessings as well so yeah. um i guess you can't have one without the other really so sometimes that's the way life is for a bit yeah mm -hmm. and then then you'll get to a good a patch where you can you can deal with it a little better you you know? exhale but exhale yeah. right yeah but, <laughs> but unfortunately you know life is a lot of peaks and valleys so yeah and it's all about how you come out on the end exactly and just know that you always have you always have people who who are here to support you far from far away close mm -hmm. you know always yeah. know and, that and thank you for letting us know that the people from the best uh, you know the best star trek series 
because it's my number one series, you know, and critically acclaimed. Most people know that it is the best series of all, and it has aged better than all of them. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Got that right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know that these people are just as genuine as they seem on the screen. Mm-hmm. On the, you know, because you know when you when you're going through something like that. And you have people who who support you. It means so much. Mm-hmm. So thank you for letting us know that they are supportive of you. They're great people. They it means great. a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, one of the things that I have loved so much um, about being a sci-fi sister and this whole journey um, in sci-fi sisterhood is the extended family that we're meeting and making. And I think it really speaks to the genuine warmth and uh, feeling of community that we find in Trek fandom, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 it, and it, the, the other people that are meeting people across the country or in other parts of the world who are, are Trek fans who really put their money where their mouth is and say like, oh, we're going to support you. And they're there. They show up and then they that every week and, you know, and we get to know each other and then we really start to care about each other. You know, I think that's what makes uh, Trek fandom so unique and uh, so powerful. And I was wondering if you wanted to or could speak to that at all, because it seems like um, it's been a big deal for you, too, like that you've been experiencing that, too. Oh, so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it, it's. It's just the Star Trek fandom is unique in its in its broadness and and how deep it goes for so many people across the globe and um, and I definitely have experienced that firsthand. Um, I, <laughs> it's it's overwhelming just. I have friends from different parts of the world that I've never met in person, but <laughs> I consider them friends, you know? Um, and it's wonderful to be able to connect people that way, even though, you know, we're not physically in each other's presence. But, um, and I think Trek just lends itself to that. Um, it's ideology uh, lends itself to that that uh, kind of community of of helping each other out and and being there for each other and and uh, no matter where you come from or or what your life has been like so it's it's uh, definitely IDIC is is very prevalent. I mean, it, it's got it, its pitfalls too. Like any family, it's got its right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those relatives. We've got the, yeah. we got the, we, we've yeah, got the, the crazy relatives. The but, crazy relatives. Yeah, well, the, ones the, the ones in the basement. The ones you keep in the basement. But at the end of the Damn. day. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, we're ultimately all part of that family, and yeah. and that, uh, and, and we'll always be connected, which is wonderful. I don't think any other fandom has this kind of connection as Star Trek fans do. Yeah, I don't. I totally I don't agree so. with you. I don't. I don't think so either, because um, you know when we started Sci Fi Sisters, it was the seventh rule that really came and gave us our first big push. So you and Sarak and Ryan, especially with VTech 2 and mm. they were just so welcoming and so putting us out there. And, you know, Trek Geeks came in later and, and, you know, pushed us on. And so people have really been in that Trek world, just really just wanting to hear a point of view, five sisters, <laughs> what yes. we have to say. Right. And they have been open and really, the idic thing is, it's a thing. It's for real. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are some people that, you know, use it and try to say, well, I, that means I can say anything because I'm being diverse. It's like, well, no, you can't be stupid. You just need to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mean you can say stupid stuff. Right. But, um, you know, it's really true. And I think um, what we have experienced and 
we were very surprised when we started Sci-Fi Sisters and that we had such a broad range of people who wanted to, you know, come in and, and listen and follow us. And, you know, we're, we're pretty much, we're going to tell you what we think. And they were just very, you know, yeah, you know, I never thought of it that way. And so I've been loving the conversations that we've had and, and loving getting to know you. I, see, I just really, you just always get me when, when you're doing the shows and you'll come up with these really great insights and zingers. And then, of course, your cat walks by. And <laughs> so, <laughs> Mo- Mochi's tail. Mochi's <laughs> tail. She's... Outside kind of that. grunge, Mochi is becoming like the most famous Trek cat. Exactly. <laughs> Mochi's the only cat I like. Oh, yay. It's just yeah. Yeah, the women at Warp had a cat count on I their... I know, they had pod- so many cats. On the they podcast festival, on the Enix podcast festival. Yeah, it was great. Like, because all of them, so many of them had cats. And they're like, how many cat sightings did we see during the Enix <laughs> It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, but the t- 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 seventh thrill has got a V cat <laughs> besides grunge. <laughs> besides well, that, grunge, yeah. Grudge, grudge. Uh, that, 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 that brings up uh you all have so, touched on touched on my question more than once and I wanted to ask Melissa, how is it being the only woman on the seventh rule? Uh, and <laughs> and do you think that you have an influence on that male thing there going on. <laughs> um, I love being that different element on the seventh rule. Sirak and Ryan are great, great humans and um, great men. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they are very male. <laughs> that was good. You did a good job the with puns. that. The puns. The puns. <laughs> um, but but they're they're always open to hearing a different point of view, which is wonderful. And um, and it, it's it's a good dynamic, I think, that we three have. That was unexpected and. Um, and I do think I have more of an influence than I thought I was going to have. I, I didn't actually think I was going to be as involved in the podcast as I've become. So mm, um, listen, I miss it when you're not on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> I mean, those guys are cool and everything, but, you know, like together, like, you, you know, you just bring that counter note, that that beautiful like counter note, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> OK, this is what we need. Yes, we need this, too, and especially because, like, you know, there's so many women in the chat pack, <laughs> you know, like right, yeah. we need somebody else to relate to, too. You keep us sticking in there for sure. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, no, girl, you just don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I want to ask. I want to ask a really out there question. Um, <laughs> it's not that out there, but I wanted to know about. I know you said something earlier about your sister kind of brought you into mm-hmm. uh, Trek, and I think everybody here was brought into Trek by someone. Um, I have three daughters, and I always love that you have three sisters. It's the three of you, uh, mm-hmm. you and your other two sisters, and every time I see pictures. With the three, I'm like, oh, just like my girls. <laughs> <laughs> so who and my daughters are, I mean, they know Trek because their parents are big Trek fans. So mm-hmm. they're just getting into Trek on their own. Did you guys, were you guys influenced by your parents or was that just your sister's thing and you kind of tagged along? Um, well, my mom would watch some of the older Trek um, and she definitely watched the movies, uh, and and she was the one I saw Wrath of Khan with the first time. <laughs> oh, cool! That's and awesome. She, That's yeah, but what I remember of it is just the worm in the ear, oh, which exactly. is not so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then uh, Star Trek uh, Four, I think, is with the humpback whales. I don't know. I just know it's the, the, the whale movie. 
the whale movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, the we Voyage saw that, Home. Okay. The Voyage Home. <laughs> and we saw that in the theaters when I was really young. But ever since then, I've loved Spock and Humpback Whales. So. <laughs> <laughs> They did more for those whales than than uh, what is what PETA or whatever Ocean yeah. or whatever the other group is. Yeah, Star Trek. Well, thank the whales. goodness because they're <laughs> amazing. They are. They really are amazing. <laughs> um, but then my my older sister uh, watched TNG and um, and that was fun. I always watch, enjoyed watching it with her when it was on. And my favorite on that was Guinan. Um, yes, really? Guinan. Yeah. Guinan was so cool. She knew everything, yes. right? She knew everything, and and she was just had this calm presence, this kind it, until calm Q came wisdom. around. <laughs> <laughs> and the fork come out. <laughs> like, uh, for those of you who can't, you hear all this in the background. That's Fran making claws and Q. <laughs> And hissing like you. hissing like hissing dining. That's what she did whenever he came around. <laughs> I'm with her. I'm like I would you know. do that too, yeah, if Q came around. Oh yeah, Q. Get away. <laughs> I love John Delancey. I love him. Yes. I love him. Oh yeah. He's amazing. He's but really I can good. do without another Q episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know another he lost podcast. me. He lost me. When he didn't send Voyager home, I was like, then what good are you? Right. <laughs> and how many times are you on that show? Say that again, uh, Brian. And how many times did he cast on Voyager? And he could have, you know, took they could have, you know, I'm like, hey. y'all need to stop putting Q up there. Yeah, I mean, even Q you know? just gave him 10 extra years off that trip, too. You can cast did something. Okay, yeah. Kess yeah, Kess home, tried, yeah. exactly. Did. Right. Really did. Yeah, Q, tried. What, did he do anything? Did he get him, like, a mile off or nothing? I don't know, but whatever. No. That was it. I don't think so. I don't no, think, I think he I think, short I think he did give them a little something coming in there, at the end, that last, kids. that last one. But it wasn't, you know, they didn't, he didn't send them home what you could have done. No. No, didn't no. even nothing. So we, just, well. we just went on a tangent about Q. I'm hey, sorry. No, right? Well, you know, you bring up Q, you see what happens. Q That's touches what the nerve. He jumped, he jumped in him when he wanted her to, you know, not let the guy kill himself. He showed a picture of Earth and everything. If you do what I say, you could be here and all that. And see, I ain't like, playing that. I ain't playing that. That's you mm-hmm. know. Okay. <laughs> now, now we're gonna so, have a whole series. With Q that's again. a whole. I know that's a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we need to do a Q show because that would just, he can't be Q that angry show. the whole hour. <laughs> well, obviously, we have strong opinions. I think that is a podcast. For real though, when I saw that group Q and on. I, at first, I thought it was like had something to do with Q from Star Trek. I was like, "What do you mean? What's QAnon?" And I was like, "Is it about Q?" And I was like, "Oh no, 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 no!" Uh-uh. Not even. Wow. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, come up with another question, please. <laughs> Tamia. <laughs> So I was all ready to go up in the meeting with my with my little Q t- t- shirt. It has the infinity symbol. So it, it, <laughs> she going in there, live long and prosper. All right. So you know, I'm the only mature adult in the room now. Uh, <laughs> um, Melissa, because I, unlike everyone else, do not know of you from. Uh, the seventh rule. I actually know of you because I I had bought one of your bracelets before at a convention. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. And I tried to find it and it's lost. So while everyone was talking, I bought a different one. So. Woo-hoo. <laughs> 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 um, but I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at your uh, the our story part of your website right now, mm-hmm. and. You say you've been interested in creating pieces that can travel with someone. And I'm just wondering, like, why is that aspect important? Because you do have, like, a lot of bags and bracelets and such. So yeah. Cool too. I mean, um, I don't get me wrong. I still put make paintings and stuff that you can hang on the wall. But uh, I like the idea of being able to carry art around with you and have it 
be involved in your day-to-day -day life so that it it maybe if you look down at your shirt or or your bracelet or your bag and it, it inspires something for nice. you know in the moment of that day so um yeah it, it's good to have a little inspiration with you all the time so very I like true. that <laughs> I like so I've never understood people that have like really like million multi million dollar paintings and then put them in a room so nobody else can see it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't get it. It's because they're, it's not about the 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 beauty the of art. It's the art. It's, right. it's about the, the inspiration. It becomes yeah. about the possession, right. you know. It's about right. the, power, I have. the power you have now because I own this. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I love all. the idea of, you know, that I, I, that's one of the reasons why I love your site, too, because your art is wearable and it's so accessible, you know, and because and especially the Trek related stuff like I, I, I don't collect a lot of Trek memorabilia or anything, but I wear my fandom like I have Trek purses and I have Trek jewelry and, you know, Trek T-shirts and stuff. And that's how I represent my fandom most of the time. And I want to be able to and I and I'd like to take it with me. Like you said, like on a daily, it makes me feel close to the things that, you know, my, the ideals that I, adopt, you know, that I have in, right. and, I, and so I love, and your bracelets, if anybody out there is listening, y'all need to get these bracelets, these leather wrap cuff bracelets that <laughs> Melissa has on there are the bomb. Oh, awesome. yeah. They are so <laughs> dope. And yes, mine. My order is coming very soon. Yeah, I'm gonna disagree you, you with. You got the address for your your website. We will, we will post it on. It will we'll be in the notes, it. folks. It'll be in we're gonna have it all in the, in the notes. notes. It's walking in art the by Melissa. Yeah, and, the, and it's and the link is gonna be in the <laughs> notes for sure. Yeah, but I just want to disagree with Tamia because my favorite pieces happen to be uh, like the one I've apparently lost. Uh, the binary Trek bracelets. That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. The binary Trek bracelet. I mean, the leather ones are nice, too. Oh, no, I like the leather one. Yeah, <laughs> I did like the binary ones, though, too. Those are dope. Yeah, I mean, you could do both. I have um, I've done both the yeah. leather in binary code or just oh, the shut the front door. Right. <laughs> Stop talking my language. OK, here's my money. That. Here's my money. <laughs> I, I just got paid. So, I know we'll be sporting in Vegas. I don't know. Can we get it in time for Vegas? I don't know. We're gonna have to. Yeah. Also, well, you know, well, are you gonna catchers. have stuff at Vegas? I <sighs> am gonna have stuff at Vegas. Um, yes. I'm working on on a few things right now. Um, T-shirts and bags, and and if I can get them all done in time, I don't know because everything is at this point hand painted unless uh -huh. I can figure something else out but everything is done by hand so mm -hmm. it takes a long time so the bracelets probably will not be at um the convention um but you can get them on my website uh but there will be a special new seventh rule t-shirt that so nice i am that. making that Yay. first yeah. folks yep <laughs> i love it i can't wait so yeah. okay, so but that's official. My Lisa's going to be at Vegas. Mm -hmm. Sci-Fi Sisters are going to be at Vegas. Yay. Well, most most half a, a little over half of us are going to be in Vegas. So sounds like a meetup, baby. Oh yeah. Yes. Hey. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm excited. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then of course like as many of us as possible are going to try to be in Chicago in April 2022. Yes. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm with you, Melissa. We're going to see how that goes. I'm claiming, <laughs> I'm claiming it. That it's I still have a cruise to do. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You're going on the cruise, too. Yeah. Well, let's, I'm, let's going, I'm, I'm also going on the cruise. Oh, that's why right. sisters are uh, traveling. Sci-fi yeah. on the cruise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I already bought my ticket for, for not Vegas, Chicago. See, oh, that's you, what okay, I'm doing. All right. That's one. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. what. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. And that call I had to take because my sister called me twice. She was telling me that she got an email saying that uh, Sonequa and Martin Green was going to be on the cruise. Going to be on the <gasps> cruise. Yes. Ooh. You heard it here. You heard it Yay. here. <laughs> yes, it's a great picture. They they just emailed it to us. It's her sitting yeah. in the chair, and it says, "Welcome, Captain." Oh. Wow. Okay, I am officially <laughs> totally freaking 
jealous. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I'm, I'm a little bit green with with envy right now. I'm sure you can still buy a ticket. Which looks really gross because my skin is brown and put the green on top of it. It's really nasty. <laughs> but, <Us>. you know. <laughs> Long he will come out like old greeny. Don't listen to to me. I'm sure there's plenty of black Orions. (laughs) Right. (laughs) There are not any black Orions. But why not? How come there's no black Orions? Because Orions are green. Isn't they a dark green? No. Dark green. They're dark green. No. There's got to be a crayon in that crayon box for the Orions. (laughs) There's a dark green, forest green, uh, lime green. Any Can you green? make it make us a t-shirt of a black Orion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, camouflage green. Camouflage what about, green. What about the black Andorians? Do they have black Andorians from the ice planet? No, they're blue. No. <laughs> dark blue. Yeah, you could have a dark blue. Like dark that blue. blackish blue. Mm-hmm. That blackish blue. Oh yeah. Wait, wait. You see that brother and you'll be like, damn, he's so black, he's blue. <laughs> well, it would be called indigo. Well, there you go. All right. There are no black Orions. I'm saying there are no black Andorians. And black Andorians. There's a black everything. Even black Telerites. And then there's all this like little mixed babies all over the place. No, we don't want Telerites are just ugly. Not everybody's cute. No, but they're they're just ugly. I'll take Orion or the Andorians first, but okay, okay, okay. All right, if you could play, this is for this is for Melissa and for everybody too. Like, okay, let's say if you could play any alien race on Star Trek, what would you play? Hmm. Oh, that is tough. It is. I'll go first. I know what I want to play. I know, I know what I want to be. Go ahead. I, I want to be a trill with Ooh, with symbiont. Trill. Oh, mm. oh, a joint mm. trill. Mm. Yeah, mm. I want to be a joint be no, trill. You know, mm. second tier trill. Mm. Be. Mm. <laughs> I want to be a trill that's not joined. Because I like the, well, I like the spots, the spots, oh, okay. cool. and they seem to go all the way down. I think that they would do. be they go all the way down. Yeah. Way I think down. that's, I think that's I a talking know point, that. you know, <laughs> you know. Um, but the, I don't want the symbiont thing. I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> don't want the worm in your belly. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, Because no. then you got the Sybil thing going. All these other people are in there. I got enough of that without without that. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> okay, so trill with the with the symbiont, trill without the symbiont. JD, <laughs> who would you who would you want to be? Romulan. Mm. Yeah, oh, no joke. you would make no such joke. a good Romulan. I would oh, I only say that because I have pointed ears, and I, just like the less work you <laughs> put in, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You know they're idiots, right? They're always getting caught. <laughs> no, they are like some of them get caught, but all of that oh come on. No, 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 not all no, of no, them. No, no, no. <laughs> Who didn't get caught? Tomalock. Oh no, they they call He never out. wins. He's an idiot. He's <laughs> always <laughs> ones that we didn't come on. meet. The ones that we didn't meet in the show. The they, ones we didn't meet. They didn't okay. get caught. Okay. Yeah. The ones we did not like, meet. Whoever is running that empire. From the they Romulan have yet to commander get that had her <laughs> name and TOS on down. They got caught. Spock had her number in a minute. They don't even have a planet anymore. Come on. Oh, oh, okay. That's just yeah. her fault. True. We need to be against the refugees. <laughs> 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 all right i'm moving this on so go ahead. no wait wait fran wait, yeah okay. fran and melissa have to go i have to go too yeah you didn't go yet oh you and sabrina Fran's okay. thinking all right sabrina uh, oh i know what i want to be darmok and jalad <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh, yes. oh, oh, yes. i want to be a child of ever <laughs> I want to be on the Tom black Lock. planet. I know that's a black planet. Yeah, Can't tell me that's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was black yeah. and black. Paul black, Winfield. Black. Yeah, you yeah. were black and black, black. <laughs> you know how I mixed up all my words? I wouldn't be able to tell these people nothing. <laughs> they would be like, what is she talking about? <laughs> all right. You know, Dama, hung out on the corner with July. <laughs> no way. 
the river frozen. Uh, that would be me. I would be so into that planet, man. I would love that. Okay. That's a good one. I like that one. Fran? I think I'd, I'd be an android. Is that an is that <laughs> an android? That's all right. cool. I'd well, be an android. Cool. Mm-hmm. Like Raina? Like, like well, Raina? But like a, so like you Soji? Would be, you would be a Soji or like you would be a Picard android, a T- TNG android, or a TOS android. Well, hey, Raina was Raina was doing it. I saw Raina yeah, last night and I did too. I saw her last night. Yeah, she was all right. That would be she was all over the Voyager Android because there was androids on that Android on uh, Voyager. I just saw that last night. Mm. Um, Facial features. Mm, Android. Probably like uh, Soji. Soji. Soji or one of the one of those androids. Mm -hmm. That that kind of android. But do you know you're an android, or do you Uh, just want to be an android? Oh, I know know I'm an android because I'd be kicking some butt. I'd go to DC. (laughs) Oh, you won't be an activated android. (laughs) Yeah, I'd be an activated android. You 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 woke. I know. (laughs) I'm I'm more. I'd be a woke android. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> but, <Picard. laughs> but you know, if you woke in Picard, you know you're the first one to die, right? That no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They forever killing black and folks, you, and, and, and then you're gonna have the oh, yeah, you'd double be strike in a because minute. you'd be black and woke. Black oh, and woke, you're dead, 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 dead. You're dead. dead. Uh, dead. You're right. Head cut off, stabbed in the chest, all that stuff going on. Why yeah, it'd be over. It'd be over. <laughs> all right. Okay. And I guess, the, I guess, I guess, I think I would like to try and be a Cardassian. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. The Cardassian women are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And they're smart. Cardassian. They're the so wait, wait, can I, can I ask a question? I have mm-hmm. a question. Uh, is this a Cardassian post-Dominion War or Cardassian pre-Dominion War? Post. Oh. Post, okay. Post. Got all these okay. qualifiers. Oh, well, they're different people. They are. <laughs> they're, they are. More, they're a little more humble after you the You want to be brave, you want to be beat. Right. 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 Are you beat? <laughs> Or are you, uh, you know, the beat? Her? Like, yeah, right. Are you like, um, are you um, a true Cardassian? Are you like that professor? Remember the professor that Quark was yeah. in love with? Yeah, yeah. Or like, like that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she was still doing. And those scientists yeah. remember? The, I thought the Cardassian women were cool. Yeah, remember yeah. The, that's what I said. Yeah, they were cool. They yeah. were intelligent. They were the intelligent yeah. ones, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. didn't she say the men don't make good scientists? Right. right. Yes, yeah. you did say that. They're too emotional. <laughs> right. <'Cause laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I love that. Always messing with them, but jarring like you know, gold to cops. Oh boy. Right. <laughs> and then Come wonder on, why yeah. DS Nine has my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm. <laughs> Okay, y'all, it has been wonderful. It has been so much fun spending time with you, Melissa. I, I, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again. This has been a blast. <laughs> and see, oh, so here's the thing. Silliness. We just have to make it happen again. It doesn't have to be a one-off. You have to okay. come back. And yep. like because we have a new season of Disco to talk about. Yeah. Eventually, on, yes. Strong mm-hmm. female leads. Yes. Yeah, uh uh-huh. Fran is showing off her hers um captain her Michael Burnham t shirt. She's not captain yet on that t shirt. <laughs> not on this t shirt, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> so this has been really fantastic, y'all. I have had a real blast. Thank you everybody for showing up. Thank you everybody for listening. And if folks want to get in touch with us and let us know what alien race they would be uh, <laughs> if they got to play a race Yvette, how do they get in touch with us? You can find us at SciFiSisters.com That's S-Y-F-Y S-I-S-T-A-S dot com Join us on the Mothership That's M-U-T-H-A S-H-I-P and the, uh, excuse me, and the Sci-Fi Sisters Book Club, both on Facebook. Download the Trek Geeks Network app where you can find us and our family of podcasts on the Trek Geeks Network. On Instagram, sci-fi.sisters. And we are also on the Twitter 
at Sci-Fi Sisters. <laughs> After listening to this podcast, please rate us and write a review. We may just read it on an upcoming episode. Woohoo! And you guys, I know it's going to be in the notes, and I know we've said it before, but check out Walking Art by Melissa. The The link will be in the show notes, and uh, you guys, you have to go on because her st- her mind is so creative, and there's way more than t-shirts and bags and bracelets, yes, which yes. is like the only things that we talked about. There's so much cool stuff on there. And also, check out the Seventh Rule podcast, and we'll yes. have the links in here, uh, mm-hmm. which premieres, has a premiere every Sunday at noon. Noon, uh, noon Eastern time. And then uh, Monday is the full broadcast with the mm-hmm. live chat with the chat pack. So you can come meet the chat pack family Monday evening. That's 9 p.m. Eastern time premiering Monday evenings. So that's right. Right. Yep. Right. OK. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we will see you in Vegas. Yes. Yes. Vegas, baby. Oh, baby. And also we'll see you in Vegas, but also we'll see you at Awesome Con in Washington, D.C., uh, August 20th through the 22nd. I hope you guys can make it. I hope you all will be there. It's at the Washington, D.C. Convention Center. Your sci-fi sisters have four, count them, one, two, three, four, four. magnificent must-see panels at oh, Awesome oh, Con. Oh. Awesome. Yes, 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 yes. All right, y'all. We- we're gonna get out your ears now. We're gone. <laughs> love y'all. Good night. Good night. Peace, Good love, and hair grease. Love. <laughs>